Hello friends, this is Ram Lakshmanan, architect of Ycrash. Welcome to the part 3 of 7 JVM arguments of highly effective applications. So in this part, we are going to talk about the arguments related to garbage collection. Friends, the fourth important argument is GC algorithm. See, the garbage collection plays a very influential role in the performance of your of the JVM of the application. The garbage collection is influential in two perspectives. The first one is the pause time and the second one is CPU. See, when garbage collection runs, it pauses, it freezes your entire application. See, there are multiple phases in the garbage collection. It's not all the phases pause the application, only certain phases pause the application. But when they pause, let's say assume there's some customer transactions have come in. And if you garbage collection runs, at that point, the customer transaction will be frozen. So if any customer who has sent the transaction to this JVM in which the garbage collection is running, then he will not get any response. So if you see unresponsiveness, if a customer says, oh, I'm, I'm not getting in response, there's a good chance that his transaction might be experiencing, a, might be suffering may be taken a hit because the garbage collection is running okay so that is one perspective in which the garbage collection impacts your application that is a pause time the second one is the cpu consumption see modern application creates tons and tons of objects even to service simple sign on requests they're creating tons of objects and so the garbage collector has to be con continuously running in the background it has to constantly keep track of all the newly created objects what are all the active references and if there are no active references it has to be sweep them out once they sweep them out the memory gets fragmented then the fragmented memory has to be compacted all of them consumes enormous amount of cpu so i can say with high level of confidence like a 30 to 40 percentage of your today's cpu consumption goes to garbage collection so you have to pay proper attention and focus to garbage collection and what kind of garbage collection algorithm you're, you, you're choosing and what are the supplemental settings for the garbage collection you are going to be passing so you want to be pay attention to that so friends in terms of garbage collection algorithm in open jdk there are six different gc algorithms serial parallel cms g1 shenandoah and zgc so if you happen to be running from JDK 1 to JDK 8, then the parallel GC is the default algorithm. Starting from JDK 8, G1 GC has become the default algorithm. Okay. And friends, if you happen to be running beyond Java 11 plus, right, then you may consider experimenting the ZGC algorithm. So we are seeing very good uh, results with this uh, ZGC. You can consider experimenting that. Okay. So friends, don't be afraid about tuning garbage collection, right? It is not at all a rocket science. It is a very, very common sense. It's a very common sense. People have made it appear like a very complicated thing. So here is a talk, GC tuning and troubleshooting crash course, which I have given in earlier. So you can find it on YouTube. So take a look at this talk if time permits. It was well received uh, by the community. So here I talk about how you can go about tuning and troubleshooting your application using the garbage collection logs. Okay, it, you may find it helpful. Okay, so now moving along. The fifth argument is enablement of GC log. See friends, my humble request, and I have seen this also, several major corporations have enabled the GC logs and in fact, in all the mission critical applications, I enable the GC log across all their JVM instances in the production environment itself. See, GC log exposes several different micrometrics. I, I've, I've spoken about some of those micrometrics in the, in the YouTube talk that I highlighted earlier. So using those micrometrics, you can predict and forecast outages way before it can happen in the production environment. Like a 40, 50 minutes before the out of memory error is going to happen, I can tell you. Like I can tell you just by looking at the GC log, whether at what points your, your machine was overloaded by other processes. So there are so many micrometrics there in the, in the GC log, okay? 
So how do we go about enabling the GC law? See, if you happen to run from JDK 1 till JDK 8, th this is the arguments you want to pass. Print GC detail, print GC date stamp, and then you want to log GC and give a file path. You can say slash temp slash mygc.log or give some file path. So the all the GC logging will happen in this file. If you happen to be running uh, from Java 9, this is the argument you want to pass. Log GC asterisk colon file and give the file path. Then the GC log will go. See, friends, uh, people ask me, what will it add any overhead to my JVM? See, the GC logging does not add, I would say, any noticeable overhead. It, even if at all, if it's adding, it's very, very, very negligible and if it, it wouldn't be even measurable. But having that log enables you with so much uh, benefits. Uh, looking at how much overhead the monitoring tools and the application performance monitoring tools like APM tools, uh, they add by putting the agent within the JVM. Looking at th this one does not even add measurable overhead, not neg very, very negligible. That's what it adds. And once you have the GC log, here are some of the tools like a GCEC, HP JMeter, Garbage Cat, IBM GC Visualizer, these are some of the free tools available for you to analyze the GC log and then see the results, okay. See, in the earlier talk, I've been highlighting some of the micro metrics which can predict the outages. But here, I will just highlight just one micro metric, okay, we'll talk about that. Okay, so friends, this is an EP usage graph of a very healthy JVM. You can see there is this full GC happened and then the memory dropped all the way to the bottom. And once again, this graph is generated by passing the GC logs by the GCEC tool. And here there is this uh, full GC happening and then the memory drops all the way to the bottom. The full GC happens and memory drop all the way to the bottom. I see this beautiful sawtooth pattern, right? And now look at this GC graph. This is generated from a different JVM instance. So what is your observation of this EP usage graph, okay. You see, this application started at 200 MB. It started at 200 MB. After the 200 MB, you can see the full GC is running, right? The, the full garbage collection, the red triangles are running. But the memory is not dropping to this 200 MB mark where it started. It, it slowly, it, keep, it keeps climbing. So what, what could be the reason? See, there could be two possibilities. The possibility one is maybe there is a lot of incoming traffic. They are creating a lot of active objects and those objects are being act having references. So it can't be garbage collected. Or the second possibility is this application is having an acute memory leak. There is a small memory leak is happening. So over a period of time, the EP usage keeps accumulating and keep building up and garbage collector is not able to drop to its initial mark where it started, okay? But now, Look at this graph. So friend, this is a very interesting graph. Here you can see full GC runs, the memory drops, full GC run, memory drop. But after a point, you see this red triangle, the full GC ran, but the memory is not dropping. Full GC ran, the memory is not dropping. The so the full GC keeps on continuing to run again and again and again and again and again. And friends, I told earlier, the CPU, when the garbage collection runs, it consumes enormous amount of CPU. So right during this time period, all this red zone, this red area, your this JVM would have had a 99%, 100% CPU consumption. That's what would have been going on in this JVM. So when an application experiences this kind of a pattern, it means it's a classic indication that this application is suffering from some sort of memory problem. It's suffering from some sort of memory problem, okay? So, Look at this. This is where it's interesting. You can see the repeated GC here started happening right around 8 o'clock. But this application will experience the out of memory error only at 9 a.m. or 9.15 a.m. Like 1 hour and 15 minutes later is that's when it is experiencing the out of memory error. So one micrometric that you can look at monitoring. Like if you use our Y crash, the root cause analysis tool, it does that for you automatically. See, one micrometric that what you look is, 
GC throughput percentage. What is GC throughput percentage? Okay, GC throughput is basically the amount of time your application spends in processing the customer activity versus the amount of time it spends in processing the GC activity. So let's say our applications GC throughput if someone says as 98 percentage that means this application is spending 98 percentage of its time in processing the customer activity. The remaining 2 percentage is what it is spending in processing the garbage collection activity. So right during this all these healthy time period all the way starting from year and year till this point this application's GC throughput might be like a 98 percent or 99 percentage but right when it enters into the danger zone the GC throughput will start to degrade from 98 percentage it will start to go to 95 percentage 90 percentage 85 percentage 80 percentage 75 percent you start to degrade so the moment if you see the 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 throughput the GC throughput the micrometric to start to degrade then what you can do you can take a corrective actions that is instead of leaving this JVM in the load balancer pool what you can do you can decommission it take it out from the load balancer pool so that it doesn't take any more new traffic because any traffic that goes to this uh, JVM starting from this point is not going to get any response it's going to have a negative impact so by looking at these kind of micrometrics you can take a corrective actions and then also here we are able to forecast several minutes before the out of memory error is going to happen we are able to forecast saying it's going to happen so we can take a corrective action okay friends so thank you for watching uh, this episode so i will meet you in the next episode about other jvm arguments thank you